Hello everyone, this is Jim Lucy, Editor-in-Chief for Electrical Wholesaling and Electrical Marketing with the July 25th edition of the Today's Electrical Economy podcast sponsored by Champion Fiberglass. The company began producing epoxy fiberglass conduit fittings in 1988 and in 1989 developed the first conduit from epoxy resins that had flame resistance and low smoke characteristics. This met the most stringent codes and specifications. Our podcast today looks at which electrical products are the biggest gains in electrical marketing's electrical price index and we'll offer a sneak preview into some of VW's research into the hottest local market areas. We'll also check out some weekly economic indicators that can give you a sense of where the U.S. economy and electrical market may be headed in the coming weeks. These five weekly indicators are initial unemployment claims at the state level, rail freight car traffic, the Baker Hughes rig count, oil prices, and copper prices. Our thanks again to Champions of Fiberglass for sponsoring the Today's Electrical Economy podcast for 2022. For the week ending July the 16th, the advanced figure for seasonally adjusted unemployment claims was 251,000, an increase of 7,000 from the previous week's unrevised level of 244,000. The unemployment rate for June remained at 3.6%. That's 2.3% percentage points lower than in May 2021. These seven states had the biggest decreases in unemployment claims for the week ending July the 16th. They were New York at 7,059 fewer claims, Ohio with a decrease of 3,752 claims, New Jersey with a decrease of 2,023 claims, Kentucky with a decrease of 1,873 claims, Indiana with a decrease of 1,687 claims, Pennsylvania with a decrease of 1,478 claims, and Michigan with a decrease of 1,393 claims. Seven states had increases of more than 1,000 claims for the week ending July the 16th. Massachusetts had an unusually large increase with 14,136 claims. We'll have to check that to see if that's a long-term trend or if that is just a one-week aberration. California checked in with an increase of 3,815 claims. South Carolina was up 2,992 claims. Georgia was up 2,818 claims. Alabama was up 1,903 claims, Tennessee was up 1,422 claims, and Texas showed an increase of 1,276 claims. One of the more interesting leading indicators for the overall U.S. economy is freight rail traffic. That's because it's a measure of the amount of raw materials and finished goods being shipped by rail. The best source for this data is the American Association of Railroads, or AAR, which publishes this data weekly at www.aar.org. The U.S. weekly rail traffic was 498,890 carloads and neutral motor units. That's down 2.8% compared with the same time last year, according to AAR data. Total combined U.S. traffic for the first 28 weeks of 2022 was 13,809,142 carloads and neutral motor units. That's a decrease of 3.4% compared to this time last year. As has been the trend over the past few months, most individual freight categories are tracking in the red compared to this time last year. Petroleum and petroleum products are down 12.5%. Grain is down 7.7%. Metallic ores and metals are down 7.1%. And total intermolliners are down 6%. Bucking this trend and coming in on the positive side were non-metallic minerals with a 4.8% increase, chemicals with a 4.4% increase, coal at 3.3% increase, and farm products excluding grain and food with a 3.2% increase. If you track the oil market, you're probably familiar with the Baker Hughes rig count, which tracks the oil and gas rigs that are operating. This data is available by state, by basin, and nationally at www.rigcount.bakerhughes.com. This slide gives you an idea of the largest oil and gas deposits in the, in the United States. It gives you a good sense of just how many of these large oil plays are in Texas and Oklahoma, and how big an area the Marcellus sketch region covers in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and parts of West Virginia. It's been a pretty slow two weeks for the Baker Hughes rig count, with no major changes in any of the largest basins. The Permian Basin is up 44% for the year, with 107 more rigs operating than in June 2021. The Eagle Ford Basin, also in Texas, had 38 more rigs operating, showing a 119% increase. The Hainesville Basin, in the, along the Louisiana-Texas border, and the Williston Basin in North Dakota and Montana are also seeing some solid growth, each with 20 more rigs operating than this time last year. The current price of WTI crude oil as of July 22nd is $94.70 per barrel. 
West Texas Intermediate is down more than $24 a barrel, or 20.6% from its recent high on June 9th of $121.51. Economists like to call copper price and Dr. Copper because he's the leading economic indicator for future economic activity. Copper is used in many industries with the construction industry among the leading markets because of its use in wire and cable and copper plumbing pipe. On June the 22nd, copper closed at $3.34 per pound on the COMEX. It's down $1.60 from its all-time high on March 4th and when it was $4.94. That's a 32.4% drop. There's also been a large drop in the past month. It's down 9.7% since the beginning of the month. As you can see in the chart, 10 of the highest daily closing places ever were posted in the last 14 months, and six of them have been posted since March. So many of those range of the prices has been between $4.75 a pound up to the $4.94 a pound that we mentioned in early March. Through in April, we saw the price range from the, in the 470s up to $4.80 a pound. Inflation's had a big impact on the copper market. It's also had a big impact on the prices in the electrical market for many different electrical products. Let's take a look at the biggest gainers in the June Electrical Price Index that's published every month in Electrical Market Newsletter. If you ever need complete monthly price index data for more than 20 electrical products, Electrical Marketing's Electrical Price Index is available for only $99 for an annual subscription. To subscribe, go to www.electricalmarketing.com or contact me at J. Lucy at EndeavorB2B.com. Electrical Marketing's total price index for the month of June was up 0.6% for the month and 15.2% for the year. While that 0.6% is a large increase, over the past few months we've seen a number of times when the increase on a monthly basis was up a full percentage point. Boxes had their biggest increase with an 8% increase for June. They're up 40.4% for the month. Switch gear up 6.6% for the month and up 26.8% for the year. Paddle boards and switches up 5% for the month, 23.2% for the year. Circuit breakers up 3.8% for the month and up 21.6% for the year. Uh, one trend line that you can see in any of these products that I just mentioned are all very high steel content. And certainly steel prices have been racing ahead as well. Some of the smaller increases we saw in this in in this month's increase, this month's index was fuses up 3%, still up at 21.2% for the year. Pole line hardware and utility market up 2.7% for the month and up 19% for the year. We saw a conduit up 2.1% for the month and up 17.2% for the year. Industrial controls also showing a 2.1% increase for the month and a 19.3% increase for the year. Industrial fixtures up 1.3% for the month and up 9.2% for the year and transformers with a 1.1% monthly change up 6.2% for the year. I'm collecting a lot of local market data for some feature articles that will be published in the next two issues of Electrical Wholesaling Magazine, and I thought I would give viewers and listeners of this podcast a sneak preview of some of this data. This map shows you the counties that netted out the biggest increases and declines in residents. As you can imagine, the counties with the biggest increases tend to be in Florida and along the coast in the southeast U.S. and in the intermountain states of Colorado, Utah, Idaho, Montana, and other vacation or retirement areas. These counties gaining population are all marked in green. Marked in red are the counties losing population. Most of, most of them were in urban areas, and particularly in California's Bay Area, Southern California, larger Midwestern cities, and the New York area. This data is all the net migration figures from 2020 to 2021. And no question that the Census Bureau was picking up the population shift that sparked at least in part by the remote offices and the great retirement that started during the pandemic. Now let's take a look at the, some of the fastest growing counties when measured by population growth and net migration between 2020 and 2021. You'll, see, you'll hear some very familiar names in this list like Maricopa County, that's the Phoenix Mesa and Scottsdale MSA. Population was up 58,246. Dallas had a couple of counties that were growing the fastest over that 2020-2021. Collin County up 36,313. Also in the Dallas Metro, Denton County up 27,747. Some other markets in, the, in Texas, Houston up in Fort Bend County was up 29,895. Also in Texas, we have Williamson County in the Austin Metro. That's up 27,760. Montgomery County also in Texas, up 23,948. 
Back in Florida, we had the Tampa St. Pete area and the Pasco County up 18,322. It's also important to get a look at some of the counties that lost the most population between 2020 and 2021. At Los Angeles County, lost the most residents. In one year, they lost 159,621. In New York County, in the New York Metro, lost 110,958 between 2020 and 2021. Kings County, also in that New York Metro, 86,341 fewer residents. Chicago's Cook County, 89,595. Queens County, also in the New York area, lost 64,648. I think you can kind of hear a trend here with some of the largest metros in the country losing residents. San Francisco also had a large loss with the San Francisco County, down 54,813 residents. San Jose, Sunnyvale, and Santa Clara, that county lost 45,090 residents. The Bronx, Bronx County in New York, down 41,490. Dallas County, which was surprising because most of the other counties in the Dallas metro were more up, but that Dallas County lost 24,907, and Alameda County, also in that San Francisco Bay Area, down 31,288. It's also important to get an idea of some of the more rural markets that are increasing, or in some many cases, you know, losing residents as well. Th these are measured by the Census Bureau as a micropolitan area. A micropolitan area has at least one urban cluster of 10,000 residents, but less than 50,000 residents in most cases overall. They it, this. Slide here measures it by net migration, which is the difference between domestic immigration into your area and folks who are moving out of there, which is called domestic out migration. This measure over the same time period. We're going to drill into some of the specific areas that are gaining and losing population in the next slide. Now let's look at the specific micropolitan areas that gained the most residents over 2020 and 2021. We had a couple in Montana, Kalispell, Montana, 3,681 new residents between 2020 and 21. Also, Bozeman, Montana, which has always been on a lot of the fastest growing market list, they gained 3,211 new residents in just the one year between 2020 and 21. Jefferson, Georgia, up 3,574 during this time period. On the New Hampshire, Vermont border, Lebanon, 2,356 new residents. For you golfers out there, the Piner Southern Pines area of North Carolina, Gained 2,595. We also showed some gains of a pretty large number in micropolitan areas in Texas with Granbury, Texas. That's 2020 and 69. Cedar City, Utah, up 2,879. Hilo, Hawaii, up 2,160. Sandpoint, Idaho, up 2,101. And Centralia, Washington, up 1,924. Some of the regions of the country where micropolitan areas showed fairly substantial declines, upstate New York and some parts of the upper Midwest. Special thanks today to the folks from Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring the Today's Electrical Economy podcast series in 2022. Thanks for listening today, and please contact me if there's any other type of economic data or news you'd like to cover in each of these podcasts. Our next presentation will be on August the 8th. Until then, be happy, stay healthy. Look forward to talking with you in two weeks. Take care.